the NFL offseason, I thought it'd be fun to go and take a look at the NFL past. And so today's video is the first in a series of videos going through the top 10 players of a given position, starting with quarterbacks. But before we get into the video, I wanted to take a second to ask you to please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. It really helps us out. If you're a fan of the NFL, you'll love this channel. We release multiple NFL related videos every Tuesday and Friday all year long. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, I'll acknowledge it was really tough to leave some all-time greats off this list, but it is a top 10, so let's start with number 10, and we got Roger Staubach. Many of you might not know who Roger Staubach is, given he played primarily in the 60s and 70s, but Roger Staubach is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time for the Dallas Cowboys, and is a big reason why the Dallas Cowboys name has so much cachet. He was the first great quarterback for the Cowboys, winning two Super Bowls and going to two more in spite only playing eight NFL seasons as a starter due to being a backup, being injured, as well as not coming to the league until he was 27 years old due to performing his military service during the Vietnam War. If you look back at Roger Staubach, you might not see a guy who had a ton of gaudy stats, but that just wasn't how quarterback was played back in the 60s and 70s. However, the fact that he made four Super Bowls in eight seasons, and the fact that his overall win total nearly triples his loss total, and his playoff record is even more stellar, it just shows you how dominant a quarterback Roger Staubach was, and that is why Roger Staubach deserves to be in the top 10 at number 10. At number 9, we have Drew Brees, a much more modern quarterback who was one of the greatest pure passers the NFL has ever seen. It seemed like year in, year out, the New Orleans Saints were putting up absolutely gaudy passing numbers thanks to Drew Brees, and he was just being let down by the fact that the team did not have a very good defense for the majority of his time in New Orleans. So on their Super Bowl season where, you know, bounty gate. Drew Brees could be a bit higher on this list, but his time in San Diego was fairly hit and miss until towards the end prior to his injury that resulted in him leaving San Diego to go to New Orleans. And he was contemporaries with some of the greatest quarterbacks of all time in what is definitively the greatest quarterback era of all time. And so it's difficult to put Drew Brees, who only has one Super Bowl title and no MVPs, any higher than ninth on this list. At number eight, we have another old guy, Johnny Unitas. I don't have many old guys on this list, primarily because quarterback is a much different position today than it was back in the day where it was significantly less important to a team's ability to win football games. However, there are some older quarterbacks that were still massively influential, both in terms of their play at the time, as well as how quarterbacks have played into the future and beyond them, thanks to their performances. And Johnny Unitas is one of those guys. Johnny Unitas has won multiple NFL championships, including winning a Super Bowl towards the end of his career. The reason he didn't win more Super Bowls was primarily because he played most of his career before the AFL-NFL merger and before the Super Bowl was even conceived as a thing. As well, Johnny Unitas is one of only a handful of players who have won three MVPs in their career and if you look at his passing stats, they just jump off the page as someone who is way ahead of their time and super consistent, super effective as a quarterback in the NFL in an era where quarterbacks really weren't that important to their team's success. And so because of this, Johnny Unitas has to be in a top 10 list and he goes at number eight. At number seven, we have John Elway, a guy who might not be on this list if not for the final two seasons of his career where he was able to win Super Bowls in back-to-back -back seasons. Prior to that, John Elway seemed like one of those snake-bitten guys. He had been to three Super Bowls throughout his career, but lost all three of them. Him and Jim Kelly were often talked about in the same sentence, primarily because they were great quarterbacks who just couldn't win the big one. John Elway had had some success winning an MVP, making some second-team All-Pros, and making a bunch of Pro Bowls, but he really didn't seem to be the best quarterback of this era prior to getting those two Super Bowl wins. And what puts him so high on this list is his ultimate playoff performances. Yes, he lost three Super Bowls, but he still made it to those three Super Bowls and made it to five Super Bowls overall, which is a very solid record for any quarterback in any era, let alone an era before the modern day where there really wasn't quarterbacks who made it to that many Super Bowls. And so that's what puts John Elway on this list at number seven. At number six, we have Aaron Rodgers, who may well be the most talented quarterback on this list, but what holds him down a little bit is the fact that he only won one Super Bowl in spite the Green Bay Packers consistently putting really good teams around him throughout his time in Green Bay. 
Aaron Rodgers just absolutely dominated. He's won four MVPs, made multiple first team all pros. He's seemingly ageless, especially given the fact that he won two of those MVPs in back-to-back years in his late 30s. All of this says that Aaron Rodgers is just an absolutely dominant force. He was clearly the best quarterback in the NFL for a significant period of time, even when guys like Drew Brees, Tom Brady, and Peyton Manning were all running around the NFL. But as I said before, having only one Super Bowl appearance and one Super Bowl win to his name is not enough, especially given the contemporaries he played with who almost all had a better Super Bowl resume than he does. And so while Aaron Rodgers could still make it to and win some more Super Bowls, given he is still active in spite his age, it is unlikely he's going to be able to do so. And if he doesn't, I don't think he can climb any higher than sixth on this list. At number five, we have Dan Marino, who much like Aaron Rodgers only made it to one Super Bowl. And unlike Aaron Rodgers, Marino didn't even win that Super Bowl. And so you might ask, why is he so high on this list? And the reason is because Dan Marino was the first modern day quarterback, period. Prior to Dan Marino, quarterback was really a game manager, a person who got 3,000, maybe in a good season, 4,000 yards, and who just managed the game, getting the ball to the running backs, passing when they needed to, and making sure your team didn't lose. Dan Marino was the first guy who had his team put all their faith and his ability to sling the ball around the field. And were he a quarterback in a modern era, I think he would do a lot better than he did with the Dolphins. And hopefully, the Dolphins would have put a much better team around him than they did throughout the 80s and 90s, where the Dolphins were Marino and kind of nothing else. And so if you look at Dan Marino's stats, you see that he's the first ever quarterback to have a 5,000-yard season. In each of his first four full seasons, he was able to lead the league in passing yards and he consistently put up some of the best yards, touchdowns, and completion percentages in the league. Dan Marino, the first modern-day quarterback and a major influence for many of the modern-day quarterbacks. That's why this guy is number five on our list. At number four, we have Patrick Mahomes, and many people might think this is way too high for a guy who's only seven years into his NFL career and only six years into his NFL career as a starter, but If you look at what Patrick Mahomes has done during this time, he absolutely belongs at number four on this list and has a very realistic chance at skyrocketing all the way to number one by the time his career's done. The fact that only six years as a starter into Patrick Mahomes' career, he already has four Super Bowl appearances, three Super Bowls, two MVPs, has had 5,000 yard seasons, and has led the league in passing numerous times just goes to show how great a player Patrick Mahomes is and how revolutionary and generational he is as a player and quarterback altogether. Realistically, if Patrick Mahomes is just a good quarterback for the rest of his career, doesn't win any more MVPs, doesn't win any more Super Bowls, doesn't go to any more Super Bowls, he might even be higher on this list than number four. And so because of this, it's tough to discount Patrick Mahomes' career with how great he's been in a short period of time to anything lower than number four. But I would honestly be shocked if Patrick Mahomes isn't higher on this list by the time he retires from the NFL. At number three, I have Joe Montana. And prior to about a decade ago, many people would have had Joe Montana as their number one on this list just due to the fact that This guy won. It didn't matter where he was. In San Francisco, he won. In Kansas City, he might not have got a Super Bowl, but he definitely won games there. And he was constantly one of the best quarterbacks in the league while doing so. Joe Montana has won four Super Bowls, which is something that only one other person to come on this list has ever done. And Joe Montana did it while being one of the most efficient and effective passers in the league year in and year out for a dominant 49ers team. In a position like quarterback where winning is obviously the most important function given how impactful a quarterback can be on a team's ability to win, the fact that Joe Montana is one of the all-time greatest winners is what puts him at number three on this list. At number two, we have, in my opinion, who's the greatest regular season quarterback of all time, Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning was absolutely dominant throughout his entire NFL career. He put together 11 straight 10-plus win seasons. 
He put together 12 straight 90-plus QBR rating, something that no other quarterback in history has ever done, not even number one on this list. And he still made it to four Super Bowls, winning two of those Super Bowls. Peyton Manning is the greatest regular season NFL quarterback, but what holds him back from being number one is the fact that his playoff performances do not compare to how good a quarterback he is during the regular season. In his four Super Bowl appearances, Peyton Manning never exceeded a quarterback rating of 90, yet he exceeded a quarterback rating of 90 on average over the course of almost every season he was in the NFL. In Super Bowls, yes, he won two of four, but he had three touchdowns to five interceptions in those games compared to regular season where he was one of the most efficient quarterbacks in NFL history after his first couple seasons where the Colts didn't put much around him. If you were to ask me who I wanted at quarterback for one game, if it didn't really matter who won or lost, I would take Peyton Manning 10 out of 10 times if I had access to every quarterback in history. But the second you put something on the line, there is a better quarterback, and that's who's coming up at number one, Tom Brady. As I said before, when it came to Joe Montana, what makes Joe Montana such a good quarterback? He won a lot. In a game where quarterbacks have such a big impact on a team's ability to win or lose, the fact that Tom Brady won seven Super Bowls and made it to an additional three where he lost, being 10 total, these are numbers that no other quarterback in NFL history comes anywhere close to. The fact that Tom Brady has more Super Bowl wins than any NFL franchise has just goes to show how dominant a quarterback Tom Brady was. Again, I don't believe he was the most talented quarterback in NFL history. The most talented quarterback, at least I've ever seen, is Aaron Rodgers. I also don't think he's the best quarterback in NFL history. The best quarterback in terms of sheer production on the field that I've ever seen is Peyton Manning. But winning is what matters in the NFL, and the greatest winner of all time, bar none, no questions asked, is Tom Brady, which is why he's number one on this list. But that's it for our top 10 NFL quarterbacks of all time. Again, this is the first of many videos going through the top 10 of many positions in the NFL. If you enjoyed this content and like this video, remember to leave a like and comment down below. Help us out, help us grow. Either way, I'll see you all next time. Peace!